So I, I wrote a book called Imagine Heaven in 2015. Um, and the subtitle is Near Death Experiences, God's Promises, and the Exhilarating Future That Awaits You. Um, and just recently wrote a book, Imagine the God of Heaven, which is really similar, but focused in really on the character and the person of God. But the, the whole way I got there was really my whole life story. Um, I was an agnostic. I, I didn't believe, I, I didn't know what I believed about God. Probably wasn't, there wasn't one. Jesus was a legend. Nobody could answer any, any of my questions. And um, I studied engineering, so that's the way my mind works. Like, okay, how does this work? How do you know? Show me. <laughs> you know, I, I need some. I need some facts. I need some evidence. And um, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up with my parents taking me to church just long enough for me to drive them crazy with all my questions, and nobody nobody would answer them. So I was like, I'm out. And um, so then my dad was dying of cancer. And someone gave him the very first research on near-death experiences, the book that coined the term. And I saw it on his bedside table. I pick it up. I just start thumbing through it, and I, I couldn't put it down. I read the whole thing in one night. And because so many of the people were talking about um, the reality of this life after their heart stopped beating, you know, no brain waves even, and yet this experience of a life that was, they say, more real than this life, and many in the presence of this God of light and love, some were in the presence of Jesus, some knew the, they were the same. And I, I read the whole thing. I was like, whoa, okay, maybe this is actual some, this is actually some kind of tangible evidence that, that this stuff is real, maybe. And I wasn't convinced, um, but I was open. And I hadn't been open before that. Uh, so, so I, uh, I started reading the Bible after that and, and not that long after I, I came to faith in Christ because I started to understand, uh, grace and how the, how the pieces kind of fit together. Um, but I always had this curiosity, like what are these near death experiences and how do they fit with what God revealed in the scriptures? And, and so over the last 35 years, I've, I've studied well over a thousand, probably 1500 or so of them now, interviewed many, many uh, hundreds of people uh, personally. And um, yeah, and that's what led to writing Imagine Heaven, where I was trying to really show that across thousands of experiences, there are commonalities of, of yes. what they say. And they, and yes. they say this all around the world. Every time. Yep. Yeah. And, Every and, time. And I traced about 40 commonalities. And what's hmm. amazing is I also did a study of, you know, how, and Imagine Heaven is really showing how those commonalities are, are exactly what we would expect from the scriptures already. It's what God's been revealing all along of what to expect in the afterlife. And, and so I was just showing, you know, not just what the Bible says, but through these people's eyes, I have about 120 of their stories in there. Wow. So I'm showing the scriptures and what it says, but then you're getting to hear it through their eyes uh, when they clinically died and then came back and what they were saying about it. And, and, what, and I tried to focus on the commonality. So in other words, it wasn't just one person saying that. It was oh, no. multiple people saying that. Yes. The, the colors being so vibrant, um, their senses being a lot more clear. Like they, they, when they come back, they say that this life is almost a dream state compared to when they're in the spirit. Yeah, um, that's it, right. You're, you're right, though. There's and I'll let you continue, but it's... It, there, there probably is more than than 40, but those are one of the key attributes that I really pick up on a lot of these when I'm trying to discern if they are being legitimate or not. But you're so correct on how many there's just like clockwork. They'll say these certain things every time. Uh, and, it, and like you said, it's not just one or two. It's all of them. Yeah. Hmm. And I, and I think that's, that's why it's important. That's why I feel called to 
uh, because if, if you go out on YouTube, you know, it's like it's blowing up. I mean, over the last really just three or four years, yeah, just all these people, all these channels about mere, near death experiences, getting millions of views and um, and and yet it's so important that we make sense of them in light of what God's been revealing all along. What I like to say, you know, and that's a big reason I wrote this new book, Imagine the God of Heaven, because God didn't just all of a sudden decide like, hey guys, here I am, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, it's finally the age of, you know, medical resuscitation, so I'm gonna show up. You know, he's, he's been revealing himself all along. Right. And that's what I'm really showing in the, in the new book is people from every single continent and every cultural background, the God they are experiencing in their near death experience is the God of the Bible. Yes. And it's, it's phenomenal. It is. It's, it's, you nailed it on the head because I'll see folks that have had NDEs that were of Hindu faith or Muslim faith and, it's it's a pivotal changing moment in their life yeah well um guy who became a good friend of mine um his name is santosh he was a manufacturing engineer grew up hindu uh, and then has his his heart coded so he hears code blue code blue they rush in he mm. leaves his body one of the commonalities right yeah and, and this brilliant light comes brighter than the sun, like times a thousand, yeah. also what they commonly say. Yeah. Uh, but not hard to look at. Right. In fact, mesmerizing to look at. And, and then he said, you know, I, I knew that this light had superior authority. I, I knew that I had to obey this light. But I also knew that this, this was a divine light and I fell in love with this light because I knew he was for me and going to protect me. Yeah. So then he takes him and he takes them on this, on this journey um, and, and through, you know, he, he calls them tunnels. Um, I don't know if exactly it was like that, but he comes to a place where this, this God of light parks over what he calls this giant compound. And so now he's outside what he calls this giant compound looking in and he's describing it. And he, he, he now I've been to India m many times cause we helped, uh, the, the church I helped found built a hospital there and there are compounds everywhere. They're like big walled, yeah. you know, square rectangular compounds. Yeah. And he said, but this compound was like thousands of miles. And he said, over there, your, your eyes are telescopic. Like you can, you can see thousands of miles. That's exactly. another commonality. Yeah. And they, can, and, uh, and, and, and little side note, you know, um, what I like to point out is that uh, many times Christians think that the, the stuff is not in the Bible, but it, it actually is. You know, if you think about it, John in revelation, is he says he's taken up into heaven and he's taken up on a, a, a great high mountain overlooking the city, right? The city of God. And he describes that city and he says he can read the names on the foundation stones and over the gates. Yeah. How? Yeah. Because he can. Because <laughs> he has this, this telescopic vision. And this is one of the things they say is you're, 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 you're not you don't have five senses. It's more like you have 50 senses. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, so, so anyway, Santosh, he's, he's just one of these, but he is actually standing there describing the, the city of God, the new Jerusalem that John described in revelation 21. He tells me it has these high walls and they're just beautiful walls inside is just gorgeous. Uh, grounds and these, these buildings of otherworldly building material. And, and he used the word mansions, mansions, buildings of otherworldly building material. And, and he said, and 12 gates, I counted them. There wow. were 12 gates all around this compound that was in the shape of a square. Okay. Now so wow. far he is, he is exactly described revelation 21 and he's never read the Bible. He's only read the Hindu scripture. <laughs> Wow. And then he said, I see, I long to go into this place. I long to go into this place. 
um, but the gates were closed to me. And he said, and I see an angel, angels on the outside of the nearest gate guarding. And then I knew I'm looking at the kingdom of heaven. So he, he has this whole experience then where, where he also gets a vision of hell. He yeah. sees God almighty on his throne. He's sent back. Um, and, and he starts seeking and I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible story. I won't give it away because the whole story, you know, is in the book, but I mean, he, he comes to faith in Jesus and yeah. starts reading the Bible and he says, everything I experienced is in this book. Wow. Now, not just Santosh, but I've got like five other Hindus who see the same God. One, one guy who is a chief anesthesiologist, um, raised Hindu. He also starts off having a hellish experience and cries out in repentance to God. He said that's, those were his words. Then he's taken by these two angels that he identified as Christian angels, which kind of confused him to this place of great beauty in, in before this God of light, brighter than the sun, same thing. Love gives him a life review. That's another commonality. Yeah. So, so just like Peter said, second Peter three, eight to the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what indie ears say. They yeah. say, you know, your time works different over there. And yeah. so they relive their lives and he sees all his sins and he thinks he's going to send me back to hell. It's what I deserve. But instead God says, I'm, I'm sending you back right, um, to tell right everybody you, I'm sending you back. And yeah, and he, and, he, and, he, and he shows them again that the changes have to be made. Now, one thing that, well, let me, let me say this. And then he later sees the same God of light. And he asks, who are you, Lord? And out of the light steps a man with a beard and a robe <laughs> and, and says, I'm Jesus, your savior. Wow. Now here, wow. here's the thing. And I, what I like to point out, so this is just like Paul on the Damascus road. Cause sometimes Christians get tripped up by this because they're like, well, why would, why would God appear, you know, to people who don't even believe in him, you know, or, or aren't, aren't Christians? Well, because he's the God of all nations. Genesis chapter 12, he raises, you know, I actually, and, I kind of have a question along those regards um, yeah, 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 cuz this yeah, is something Christopher and I have talked about is do NDEs have you done have you done any numbers um collected any statistics on the amount of like Christians who have NDEs who are already saved uh, versus those who are unsaved and because I was theorizing I wonder if these aren't like the last ditch effort to save somebody um from the spiritual realm to where like a uh, Christian is less likely to have an NDE uh, whereas somebody who's non-Christian, have you ever done any statistics on something like that? I mean, there's there's no statistical difference, and and I think the important thing to understand, and and this is what you know, I studied these thirty five years before I wrote my first book for a reason, because hmm. there's a lot of confusing stuff, <laughs> right? There <Yeah>. is, <laughs> there is, and. And, 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 you know, that's why I'm trying to show how, how it ties to scripture because, you know, people have an experience and it's an experience beyond our dimensionalities. Beyond so, comprehension. Yeah. So, so imagine we're living this, this life of three dimensions, but imagine if we were living it on a flat black and white painting in your living room. Okay. Yeah. So we're two dimensional creatures. We can only go up and down and side to side. And then death means separation. So at death, your flat image is peeled off that two dimensional world and now brought out into this three dimensional realm that was all around you, but you had no concept of it because you didn't have an in or out. You didn't have a third dimension and you experience hmm. three dimensions of color. And then imagine getting pressed back into your flat two dimensional world. And you have to explain three dimensions of color and that experience in two dimensional black and white terms. Incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what indie ears tell me it's yeah. like that. That's exactly right. So you're, so they're experiencing things that are be that are in a fourth, a fifth, a sixth dimension. I don't know how many, 
But <clears throat> the point is they are reporting things, but they also are interpreting things. So what they commonly report is, is consistent. And that's where you can find that, that, that kernel of truth that you, that you can see how it aligns with the scriptures. But sometimes they'll take that same thing they report and then they'll interpret it. And, and I, can, I can give you examples of it. But let me go back to the point about, I like to point out to Christians that Paul was not a believer in Jesus. He was arresting Christians and having them persecuted, thrown in jail, yep. even killed, when the same brilliant God of light appeared to him. Acts 9, Damascus Road, right? Yep. And, and I, I like to point out as well that Jesus does not explain the gospel. He doesn't tell Paul what to do. He later sends Ananias to tell Paul and explain the message. And then Paul still has a free will. He had a lot to lose as a Pharisee. So he had to decide still, will I, will I put my faith in Jesus? Because I'm going to lose a lot, but now, now I know. And, and that's important because just because these indie ears have a positive experience or maybe it starts positive or, or experience the presence of God, that doesn't mean that's their eternal destiny. Right. And that doesn't mean they're right with God. And they are coming back and they still have a free will and they can either choose to seek him and find him like, like Santosh or they can choose to go their own way. Thanks for watching the segment from our live show. We're live every night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for the Sabbath. See you tomorrow.